Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Mr. Gary, when you look into the world, you have some people that are just extremely wealthy. I mean, they are rich. Uh, and some people, uh, well, not so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have what they need maybe to get by, and unfortunately, there are some people that don't even have that. But when we talk about being rich, that is something that uh, I think that a lot of people in the world are kind of confused what that really means because richness, richness is not really defined really by our monetary gain. Now, when you look at Luke 16, Luke 16, you have a rich man, and he was rich. You, you can tell that. Now, well, what, what do we really see about this man? It says there in uh, Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 19, it says, There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple, fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. So you look at this man, I mean, he, he's there, and he just, he looks the part. You know, he acts the part. You know, everything about him, he, he's rich. He has, he has what the world would, would see as those, those, those earthly things that just, you know, make people fit into a certain category of wealth. And so he's fine in this purple and fine linen, fine linen, uh, since he fared sumptuously every day. But it says there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, Full of sores, uh, who was who was laid at the gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell off the rich man's table. Uh, it says, more, uh, moreover, uh, the dolls came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. This rich man also died and was buried. Now you think about this: that here is this rich man, and, and in fact, the crumbs from his table were, you know, something that. Could, could be consumed. Uh, so most people don't even have enough crumbs that can be consumed. But <laughs> his crumbs were enough that could be consumed by someone, and that's how poor Lazarus was. He just wanted the crumbs from this man's table. Right. And so you kind of see this this contrast of this rich and poor. But when they get to you know what's coming next, it talks about you know, it, they're in Hades. They kind of had a a different experience than they had here on life. Um, what was really their experience there? I mean, one was rich, one was poor in this life. What, what about the next life? Yeah, just about flips. Just about flips. Yeah, <laughs> really, I guess you could say it does flip because uh, the beggar is taken to Abraham's bosom, which to the Jew is paradise. That's the point. And then the rich man lifts up his eyes, and he's in torments, mm -hmm. uh, both in the in the waiting place of the dead. Right. But Boy, that's quite a distinction. Oh, it know? is, definitely. Yeah. So then, uh, of course, we could read on and learn about them, but I think the lesson just for that part, if we're just talking about what what is truly rich and what's not, we start thinking about that, it's clear that, that the Lord is saying, you know, all this stuff that you do here, if you're just doing it for you, right. if you're only interested in amassing fortunes for yourself and and pampering yourself, then you've got a problem. And of course, Paul picked up on that same idea uh, when he wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6. He's, he's closing out this epistle, which is literally filled with instructions for mm -hmm. a young preacher. And now he's telling him, now here's a sermon idea for you. I mean, that's the way <laughs> I'd put it. And it's in chapter 6 of 1 Timothy, verse 17. Mm -hmm command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty nor to trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy and I don't know about you but I, I read that that verse and I think oh rich man and Lazarus the, the rich man this is him <laughs> he he's exactly this guy he but then he goes on what should they do if they're not supposed to be all about themselves and all about you know their money and what that will do for them. Well, he goes ahead, let them do good, that they be rich in good works, right. ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So all of a sudden we get, we get this different twist on it. You really want to be rich? Be rich in doing good things. Absolutely. And here's the funny thing. We can all do it. Oh, definitely. And I find it interesting. You know, we think about the poor man and Lazarus, you know, in the in the earlier account. Of, you know, Lazarus, it wasn't, he didn't get his entrance into paradise. 
because he was poor. Okay, that's not why he got the interest in the paradise. He got the interest in the paradise because of the nature of, of his character, of who he was, what he was all about. And so when we come over here to Timothy, and he's like, you know, do good, you know, uh, store up. You know, these, right. these terms that show action, that show, you know, purpose in life, have a purpose that's filled with God. Have a purpose that's led by God. Uh, and that's how we can truly be rich. Um, we might not have all the monetary things of this life, but we will definitely uh, be rich uh, now in God in, Christ, in God in Christ Jesus and forevermore.